In this video, I'll show you how we can use Android Studio to make a simple Flutter application and integrate that with version control using Git and GitHub to push our changes out to the web. Let's start by making a new Flutter project. Notice that I already have my IDE configured according to the documentation. I have to give my project a name, and I'm not going to use any of these uh, mobile targets. I'll just use the web target. It's very quick to make this template project, but I should probably run it to see that it's doing what I expect. So I can select my web browser and then run. There it is. And it seems to be working fine. Good. So now what I'd like to do is integrate version control. That is, I want to be able to keep track of all the changes to the project. So I'll go to the VCS menu, that stands for Version Control Systems, and choose Enable Version Control Integration. Git is the version control system I'll use. And what that does is make an empty local repository on my hard drive. Right now, none of these files in the project are actually staged for commit. That is to say, Git isn't tracking any of these. And I can see this if I click on the Commit tab. In my Changes heading, there's nothing, and I see 15 unversioned files. OK, here's what I like to do. I want to tell Android Studio that it should track all the files in the project that matter. So I'll right click here and say git add. Now something that's interesting here is it's not actually adding all of the files, it's only adding the ones that matter. Well how do I know that? Let's go and look at this commit tab again and we can see that one of the files that's tracked is this .gitignore file. This is a really interesting configuration that ensures that files that should not be tracked are not tracked. To make a long story short, this is very easy for beginners to do the right thing. Simply, like I showed you, right click up here, add all the files, and only the ones you need will be tracked. Very nice. Okay, back to the commit tab. We want to get this initial project into our repository, so I'm going to select all the changes and give it this conventional starting message, which is initial commit. And I can actually say a little bit more about that. Um, this is just the plain Flutter project. Starting project. There we go. I'll commit that. And that commits the change to my local repository. So on my hard drive, on this repository, I have that change tracked. In fact, I can see that if I click on the Git tab down here, I can see there is one commit. All right, let's get that commit pushed out to GitHub. So over here, I've got a browser window open where I'm looking at one of my course organizations. If you're one of my students, you probably want to put your repository into an organization like this, although the same processes can also be used for personal repositories. So I'm going to make a new repository. I'm going to call this video demo. And these default settings are good. Um, you want to watch out for these tabs that add readme files or license files. Um, don't do that because that's going to make these other steps not work quite right. So leave those as is. All right, create a repository. What this does then is make an empty repository out on GitHub servers. Now to get my changes locally out to GitHub, I need to know where my remote is. And that's going to be this URL here. If you're in Windows, you're probably going to use the HTTPS version. I happen to be on Linux, uh, where I have SSH keychains already set up, so I'm going to do it this way. So again, your interface might be a little bit different, um, but the principles here are the same. The patterns are the same. Okay, so I'm going to tell Android Studio we want to push the local changes to our remote repository. I like to do that from the Git menu, where I can choose Push, although if you recognize that icon, you can see it's also available over here. So, git push. I have to define a remote. Now you only have to do this once when you're telling it where do I push to. And it will be that URL. It gives me a summary here of all the files it's going to push and all of the changes that it's pushing. So I'll click on push and away it goes. So let's look at that web interface again and reload this page. Now we can see that there's a copy of my repository out here on GitHub servers. Pretty neat. Okay, let's make a change to the project. So 
Uh, let's see. Right now, if you recall, it looks like uh, it's blue, right? Uh, let's just change that to red. So I'm just going to make this red and save it and bring that back over. And you can see, voila, instantly it's red. That's a meaningful change to my project. So let's go ahead and make a commit. I'll select all my changes and I'll give a good commit message here, which will be change blue to red and commit that locally. Now again, within this get view, we can see there's two changes in the history. My initial commit, which has been pushed out to my origin or my remote, and this change, which is only on my local repository. But since I've already defined my remote, I can very easily push all my changes here out to GitHub. And then I can see them here. I'll reload this page. We can see there's been two commits, including this change 26 seconds ago. So hopefully that's enough to get you up and running with Android Studio, Flutter, Git, and GitHub. Happy programming.